Hey everyone, welcome back to my another tutorial. This is second part of reinforcement learning tutorial series. In first tutorial, we used simple method to train two neural network model to play card pole balance game. In this part, our task will be the same, but this time we'll make our environment to use two neural networks to train our main model. Adding to this, we'll implement soft parameters update function, and finally, we'll compare results we got with each method. The tutorial will go into the original structure of DeepQ network agent. We'll implement additional enhancements. I assume that the reader has a basic familiarity with reinforcement learning or machine or deep crew network or deep network learning and so on everything with machine learning the agent we will implement is known as double deep Q network its enhanced version of the original deep Q network was introduced nine months later that utilized its internal neural network slightly differently in its learning process technically the agent implemented in this tutorial isn't really a deep Q network since our network will only contain uh, four layers and and so are not actually that deep. But this distinguished ideas of deep Q learning are still utilized. An additional enhancement changing how the engine neural networks work with each other known as soft target network update will be also tested in this tutorial code from my previous tutorial we already know the case of card pool game the state is represented by four values card position card velocity pole angle and the velocity of the tip of the pole and the agent can take one of two actions at every step moving left or moving right so as you can see i already wrote full tutorial code which I'll show you in a moment how everything works. But first, I would like to cover the theory and explain for you why and what I chose to do and how everything works. Because in future, uh, this code will grow up and up, implementing more different strategies and methods of learning and so on for different tasks. So, this story is about double deep Q network. In double deep Q learning, the agent uses two neural networks to learn and predict what action to take. So one network referred to as the Q network or the online network is used to predict what to do when the agent encounters a new state. It takes in the state as input and outputs Q values for the possible actions that could be taken. The online network second takes in a vector of four values state of the carpal environment as input and outputs a vector of two q values one for the value of moving left in the current state and one for the value of moving right in the current state the agent will choose the action that has the higher corresponding q value output by the online network double Deep Q networks handles the problem of the uh, overestimation of Q values by calculating the target with single deep network. We face a simple problem. It means how are we sure that the best action for the next state is the action with the highest Q value. We know that accuracy of Q values depends on what action we tried and what neighboring state we explored. Consequently, at the begin, beginning of the training, we don't have enough information about the best action to take. Therefore, taking the maximum Q value as the best action to take can lead to false positives if non-optimal actions are regularly given a higher Q value than the optimal best action. The learning will be complicated. So, the solution is, when we compute the Q target, we use two networks to decouple the action selection from the target Q value generation. So, we first use our deep Q network to select what is the best action to take for the next state. So, this is the action with the highest Q value. And we use our target network to calculate the target Q value of taking that action at the next state. 
Therefore, double network helps us reduce the overestimation of Q values and help us to train faster and have more stable learning. Double deep Q learning. Agents learn and improve themselves through a method called experience replay. The second network called the target network comes into play. In order to carry out experience replay, the agent remembers, remembers each step of the game after it happens. Each memory consists of the action taking the state that was in place when action was taken. The reward given from taking the action and the state that resulted from taking the action. These memories are also known as experiences. Procedure is carried out after enough memories have been stored and consists of first a random set of experience uh, called mini batches and for each experience in the mini batch new Q values are calculated for each state and action pair. If the action ended the episode Q value will be negative bad. And if the action did not end the game, an example kept the agent alive for at least one more turn, the Q value will be positive and is predicted by what's called a Bellman equation. The general formula for Bellman equation used by the agent implemented is somewhere here. Let me find it for you, but it should be in your replay method. So here it is, the Bellman equation formula. So here is our target model predict and target value quote. And it's here. We chose from the target value. So I will explain everything later in this tutorial. So keep, let's keep explaining. So the neural network is fit to associate each state in the mini batch with the new Q values calculated for the action taken. So as you can see here is full code for experience replay method used in the code and I commented all lines to with explanations to understand every step at least I think it should be better to understand. So we have all our memory somewhere in the self memory array the q array so we have a mini batch for example 32 and we take uh, 32 random uh, batches where is all our states written in action reward date done i mean state next state and so on and we loop these mini batches and this is done only for faster training and to do it this in batches then we do a predict function all in batches all this we do a predict for current state next state and next state with our target model and then we do our uh, for loop with our mini batches and so called reward function so if we have a double deep q network we use following wing target formula and if we don't we have a standard deep q network we use this formula to calculate our reward so then we just fit our model and then after fit we you'll see what we do i'll explain this later but you might ask why are two networks needed to generate the new Q value for each action. So the single online network could be used to generate the Q values to update but if it did then each update would consist of the single online network updating its weights to better predict what itself outputs. The agent is trying to fit to a target value that itself defines and this can result in the network quality updating itself to drastically in an unpredictable way. So to avoid this situation, the Q values to update are taken from the output of the second target network, which is meant to reflect uh, the state of the online network, but does not hold identical. 
So in code, you can see that there is line uh, self if self double dpq network I was telling you. So the code is written in a way that we will need to change one defined variable false and we'll be using standard dpq network. This will help of course us to compare different results of these models of this tutorial and my previous tutorial. So uh, you might ask what makes this network a double DPQ network? So the difference is that using the terminology of the field, the second equation uses the target network for both selecting and evaluating the action to take, whereas the first equation uses the online network for selecting the action take and the target network for evaluating the action. So the selection here means choosing which action to take and evaluation means getting the protected Q values for that action. This form of Bellman equation is what makes this agent a double deep Q network and not just a deep Q network. So next implementation I did is soft target network update. So the method um, is used to update the target networks with in the original DPQ network paper is to set them equal to the weights of the online network every fixed number of steps. So uh, another established method suggests uh, updating the target network weights incrementally. This means that our target network weights should reflect the online network weights after every round of experience replay. So you can see my update weights update function and I update uh, I update the weights, simply the weights which I train on my main model. If you don't understand code here, don't worry, it's much easier to understand everything when you get deeper into full code. But simply talking, if we would use tau as 0.1, where's my tau? See, so here was my tau, and it is used here and here, as you can see. If we, if we would use tau as 0.1, then we would get a result as target weights, this one. And this means that we are updating only 10% of new weights and we use 90% of old weights. So anyway, you, you'll see that how, how it performs in an example I will show you later. By running through experience AAA every time the agent takes an action and updating the parameters of the online network and the online network will begin to associate curtain stage action pairs with appropriate Q values. The greater promise there is for taking a curtain action at the curtain state. The model will begin to predict higher Q values and will start to survive for longer as the agent keeps playing the game. So in full code I wrote few simple functions to track our scores and plot results in graph for better visualization. So here was my load model function and simply I plot every step of training to the graph. We might compare the results of three methods I used here and train it. You'll see with this code we did three different experiments. I mean, I did three different experiences. So I wrote uh, three experiences. First is when my, I was not doing soft update and I was doing a double DPQ network. S second uh, example was also without soft update and standard DPQ network. And the last update was with soft update and used double DPQ network. So that our experiment would not be too long. I defined maximum episode steps to train as 1000. And, and yeah, now I think I can show you the results. 
not to waste your time by running this full code of training because well three methods it took me a while to train it's not a difficult model but still it took me a while so here it is and this is standard DeepQ network as you can see from the name with these parameters we were using standard DeepQ network without soft update from following graph results we can see that learning wasn't stable and always we were receiving random spikes but if we would try this model in test mode it would perform the same way constant low results with spikes but our goal is stable solving so this is the most basic method of training as and you can see the results second example was double deep q network so with these parameters we were using uh without soft update from following graph the results we from the results we can see that learning was more stable than in first test and we were receiving higher average score than in standard DeepQ network test and also in double DeepQ network we received more spikes these results might prove that double DeepQ network learned better than DeepQ network but who knows and the last example third was test with soft update false i mean soft update true and double deep q network as true so with these parameters from the following graph we can see that results look quite the same as not the same as using soft update so it's quite hard to say if it has some kind of effect so to get better results maybe it would be better to do more tests but you can see that it it shows also uh, random spikes except here and in here but anyway it, it still gets uh, quite nice results as the maximum it reaches the maximum so as my goal of this tutorial was to test double deep q network agent and test the received results however from one test we can say that double deep q network is much better than deep q network but knowing that there is already tested deep q networks and deep, deep double q networks on several atari games on the internet the normalized as you can see score how to zoom this just like that uh, achieved by ai agents of two, two methods as well as the comparable human performance are shown in this figure the figure also contains a tuned version of double deep q network where some hyperparameters optimizations were performed and i will post this image on my webpage you can check it there so as you can see here is standard deep q network double deep q network and of course tuned double deep q network so from these results you might see that quite always double q network is much is better than single it can be clearly be noted that these two different versions of double deep q networks achieve better performance in this area than its vanilla implementation so in our next tutorial we will test our reinforcement agent with more known advanced methods you will see them so keep following me subscribe me wait for my next video and of course Thank you all for watching, good luck, I hope this was useful for you and see you in our next tutorial, it will be amazing. Thank you again and see ya!